Shipping video games and consoles might seem super intimidating and really complex, but it's actually really simple. And in today's video, I want to show my entire shipping process from start to finish. In today's video, I want to go ahead and go over everything from pulling orders to packing them to what sort of shipping services I use, to what sort of shipping materials I use, where I get my shipping materials. All that sort of information will be shared in today's video. So with that said, it is Thursday. We have to go to the post office today, which means we have to pack all of our orders. We have about 39 items to pull and pack. So with that said, step number one is pulling orders. Uh, this should be a whole lot of fun. So let's take a look at what's sold. All right, starting things off with Shelf R2. We sold a copy of Pictionary for the Nintendo Wii. From Shelf 15, we sold a copy of GTA 4, which is right here with boxes in the way. There we go. GTA 4 for the Xbox 360 from Shelf R15. From Shelf R14, we sold a copy of Marvel Super Alliance. Also from Shelf 14, we sold a copy of Batman Arkham City. From Shelf R4, we sold a copy of Batman Arkham City. Back to Shelf R14, we sold a copy of Rage. From Shelf R11, we sold a copy of Siphon Filter Dark Mirror. Back to Shelf R14, we sold a copy of Prototype 2. From Shelf R8, we we sold a copy of Final Fantasy X. From Shelf R15, we sold a copy of Resident Evil 6. From Bin V85, we sold a copy of NBA Live 15. From Bin V105, we sold a copy of GTA 4. Moving on to some of our consoles, we sold this white Xbox 360 bundle. From V166, we sold a copy of Assassin's Creed. From V86, we sold a copy of Skylanders Giants. We did also sell this Xbox 2 terabyte hard drive. From our loose bin, we sold a copy of Madden NFL 25. From V117, we sold a copy of Spider-Man. From bin V2, we sold a copy of Cyberpunk 2077. From V139, we sold a copy of The Keeper. From V26, we sold a copy of Fallout 4. From shelf R11, we sold a copy of Medal of Honor rising sun from v111 we sold a copy of the sims 3 from v137 we sold a copy of turok evolution from v2 we sold a copy of pokemon violet and then another copy of cyberpunk 2077 once again from v2 we sold a copy of uncharted 4 from r4 we sold a copy of halo 3 from R2, we sold a copy of Call of Duty World at War. Coming back to the consoles, we sold a Nintendo Switch OLED. Coming back to bin V2, we sold a copy of Zelda for the Nintendo 3DS. From bin V78, we sold a copy of Sesame Street. From bin V2, we sold a copy of Fallout New Vegas. From R1, we sold a copy of Nickelodeon Dance. From V148, we sold a copy of GTA episodes from Liberty City. From shelf R12, we sold a copy of Mario Kart Wii with both of the steering wheels. From R11, we sold a copy of Final Fantasy X. From V142, we sold a copy of Blazing Saddles. And last but not least, from V76, we sold a copy of Superman Returns. All right, so now that we have pulled everything, I have went ahead and organized it all as I was pulling the orders. Uh, starting things off with the consoles, we have our first uh, console bundle, then we have the OLED, then we have the two terabyte hard drive. Uh, moving over to the video games, these are all of the individual orders. This is one custom bundle, and then we have another custom bundle. Obviously, these were purchased uh, as separate listings, but I went ahead and combined the shipping. And then this is a, another custom bundle, all one listing, but uh, we'll, this will not be able to fit in a bubble mailer. So with that said, I usually start off by packing all of the video games. So let's go ahead and go over that. All right, now shipping video games is a fairly straightforward process. Uh, starting things off with everything that can go with Canada Post letter mail, which essentially allows you to put video games inside those red mailboxes. Obviously, that's for any items that are going within Canada, assuming they're also being shipped from Canada. Uh, so with that said, it's actually fairly straightforward. Let's take this game for example. It is going to somewhere in Canada. So this will go inside this bubble mailer. This is a size zero Uline bubble mailer. I usually bulk order about 500 of these at once. Your address or your return address will go up here. I actually have a PO box stamp, which I go ahead 
and I simply will stamp on. It looks a little bit like this. Obviously, won't show the address for obvious reasons, but I'll go ahead and use this stamp uh, and then bulk stamp them before I package everything. So my return address or your return address in this case goes in the top left corner. The buyer's address will go in the middle. Uh, I was able to print these labels out using my Dymo label printer, which I simply have hooked up to my PC. Then I simply drag, or at least I copy and paste the buyer's address onto the software, which allows me to go ahead, print the label, slap it on. Uh, and now that the game is inside, which obviously won't put the game inside because I'll ruin the mailer for no reason, uh, we actually go ahead and we use our stamps. So these are permanent stamps from Canada Post. I bulk purchased these uh, at, with rolls of 100 from Costco. You can get these from Costco. You can get these from the Canada Post website, or I believe actually just straight up from Canada Post. They are a little bit more expensive directly from Canada Post. So if you're looking for a bit of a discount, Costco is the way to go. And in terms of how many stamps to use, if the item is under 200 grams, you use three stamps. If it's under 100 grams, you use two stamps. Uh, and it's that easy. It's either three stamps or two stamps. Um, if it's above 200 grams uh, and it's between 200 and 300 grams, it would be five stamps. But that is rarely the case, if ever the case. Now, how do you weigh how much all of this weighs? Well, I go ahead and I simply grab these two. Obviously, the game is inside the bubble mailer. Uh, then I'll put it on my electronic scale, which will ideally turn on. There we go. I'll go ahead head and simply put these two on it when it's done so as you guys can see this is 138 grams this will only need three stamps i go ahead take the stamps pop three in the top right corner and after everything is shipped i'll simply go ahead and drop these off at the canada post mailbox if you try to bring these in inside a canada post location they don't really seem to grasp the concept of how this method works so i find that it's a lot easier and way less of a headache to simply drop them off at a Canada Post mailbox. Now, moving on to some international orders because it's actually fairly similar. Let's say, for example, it's this copy of Final Fantasy X. Uh, and if, let's say it's going to the US or to Brazil or wherever else in the world. I'll go to eBay. I will purchase a six by four label. Actually, I'll just purchase a shipping label and then print it out as a six by four uh, label. I'll go ahead, send it to my IDPRT shipping label. Not sponsored, unfortunately, but either way, uh, I'll go ahead, print out, I'll go ahead and stick it directly on the bubble mailer as such. Obviously, this information you won't need, but just pretend it's not here. I'll slap it on directly on. I'll also have to signature at the bottom if it's international. Uh, and that's, that's it. Basically, you go ahead, drop this off at Canada Post, and you won't have any problems because it's already paid for uh, through eBay. So it will be all ready to go. And that's easy as that. Um, yeah, I mean, that is really it in terms of shipping individual video game orders. But when it comes to custom bundles, combined shipping, this is where things get interesting. All right, so for combined shipping, if it is an order of just two games, I recommend picking up these 9.5 inch by 13 0.6 inch bubble mailers from the dollar store. They are a dollar seventy two uh, for two bubble mailers, so they're not the cheapest things in the world, but uh, they definitely come in clutch because what you can do now is take two games and put them in one bubble mailer. Now, what can you do in terms of stamps? Well, these guys are actually super cool because you can still use Canada Post letter mail for these, uh, and actually, it's kind of the same logic. If it's up to three hundred grams, you can use a total of five stamps, or you should use a total of five stamps, uh, and just simply go ahead and also drop it off inside the Canada Post mailbox. Uh, you can bring it inside, but you're gonna have a little bit more trouble uh, because once again, they don't seem to really grasp the concept of permanent stamps and letter mail shipping. Uh, also, because it's not letters you're sending, you're sending video games. Uh, once again, you, it's, you can completely do that. It's totally fine. It's, it's, um, it's on the Canada Post website. I just recommend saving the time and going to a Canada Post mailbox, which is right outside all Canada Post locations anyways. Either way, pop these guys inside the uh, the larger bubble mailers. Uh, your return address goes in the top left corner. Buyer's address goes in the center. Stamps go top right corner. Now, here is where you can really start to play around with, uh, with some of these bigger orders because this order has, I believe, like 10, maybe 11 items in it, something like that. Uh, and well, what you can do 
is basically be able to take something that would cost the buyer maybe like 30 bucks, something like that, and then basically combine two games per bubble mailer. So that would essentially be uh, $5 for every two games. So let's say there's a total of 10. That would be a total of $25 because each one of these stamps costs about 99 cents or a dollar. If you get them from Costco, they are 99 cents and they're, I believe, a little bit more if you get them from Canada Post. So yeah, it would be $5 for each pair of games and then it would be a total of $25, assuming let's say there's 10 games and you can ship these within five bubble mailers. Uh, now what else you can do, and sometimes it makes more sense if it's an international order, um, or let's say if there's another option or if the buyer wants tracking. Now what you can do is grab yourself a eight by six by four box. I have these uh, bulk ordered from Staples because Staples is reliable. I don't know if it's the cheapest option, but I believe it's uh, maybe about 50 cents a box for these. Um, and they go up to me about a dollar a box from the bigger ones. Either way, uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put all those games in one box, purchase a shipping label from eBay once again, and then simply ship all those games in one package instead of having a whole bunch of other packages. Uh, but assuming they don't fit in this box, you can also use a 10 by eight by six from eBay. I, once again, I don't really purchase boxes from eBay anymore. So I would get uh, a 10 by eight by six from Staples. Uh, and yeah, it's kind of really the same thing in terms of actually packaging it. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll put some packing paper on the bottom of the box, around the box, and then on top of the box. Uh, basically surround all these video games with packing paper, make sure nothing moves. I'll cover that more in detail when we do the consoles because it's essentially the same principle. Uh, and yeah, that is essentially it for video games. I mean, if you're doing video games with uh, controllers or with accessories, uh, same logic, just make sure that it's nice and uh, well packaged up. It would use a box, obviously. You're not gonna put uh, these guys through letter mail. It's not gonna fit, it's not gonna work. You're gonna need a box. Um, you're gonna need, or a really, really big bubble mailer, but I recommend using a box. I think it's a lot easier to do. So with that said, that is it for video games. Um, in terms of shipping services, as I said, I use Canada Post letter mail for everything that's within Canada uh, and under $40. So if it doesn't need tracking and it's going within Canada, Canada Post oversized letter mail uh, slash Canada Post letter mail uh, is the way to go. This is the method that you can use these stamps for. Uh, if it is over $40, I will use Canada Post expedited shipping. If it's an international order, um, if it's under $40, I will simply use Canada Post uh, Air US for anything going to the US. And then I'll use Canada Post Air non-US, uh, which is anywhere outside of uh, North America. So Brazil, Europe, Asia, wherever. Uh, anything that does require tracking, I'll only ship to Canada and US. So any game over $40, any bundle over $40 that does require tracking. So you can avoid any sort of issues with items not arriving, stuff like that. Uh, and you can obviously have insurance on those shipping options as well. And for those, like I said, for international, I only ship to the U.S., so I will use U.S. tracked shipping, uh, and that will be the option that you guys are seeing on the screens right now. Uh, and yeah, I mean, that is how I do it. Fairly straightforward. Uh, it's one whole system, nothing really changes. And really the only thing that's really a variable is on these combined shipping orders. But once again, these are super easy to do as well. So with that said, video games are out of the way. Let's go ahead and move on to some of the more complicated things, that being the consoles. All right, now consoles come in all shapes and sizes. Some of them are massive, like this Xbox 360. Some of them are a lot smaller, like the handhelds, such as the Nintendo 3DS, 3DS XL, PSP, PS Vita. Uh, Game Boy Advanced SP, all of those guys. So starting things off for all the handhelds, I will usually put them in this eight by six by four, or if they're a little bit bigger, I'll put them in this 10 by eight by six. Now consoles such as let's say the PS2 Slim, uh, yeah, I think maybe the PS2 Slim, maybe a couple other consoles that might be able to fit in here. I have a bigger version of the 10 by eight by six, which is the 12 by eight by six. And this comes in clutch, especially if there's controllers that need to be included with the, the consoles, stuff like that. Uh, this is a great option for that. Nintendo Switch consoles might even work great for this box. Uh, and then my largest box that I bulk purchase is this 18 by 12 by eight, which works great for all of my bigger consoles like the Xbox 360s, any sort of consoles with the boxes or like the actual boxes like the OLED is in box, uh, Xbox One, PS4, those sort of consoles will fit in here. Uh, and I haven't really had any consoles that are too big for the 12 by eight by six. So with that said, I actually wanna show you guys how I package an item uh, because this is where things get super, super interesting and probably a little bit more complicated for most people. I also forgot to add tape gun, normal tape, just 
bulk buy these from Staples, Costco, wherever is cheapest. And then a roll of eBay sponsored tape. Now I get this tape with my eBay shipping coupon uh, because I figured that it actually looks a little bit better. And I will show you guys why I recommend having eBay tape instead of the eBay boxes. Uh, so with that said, let's go ahead and get started with packing this Xbox 360. All right, in terms of taping the bottom of the box, I go four across and then three across this way. So we have a little bit of a grid pattern. Uh, you want to make sure the box is going to not fall apart when it's being shipped, which is why I use uh, quite a bit of tape. Also, this tape is on the weaker side of things. If I had stronger tape, I'd maybe go like two across and then maybe one or two this way but yeah fairly straightforward nothing out of the blue all right here is where i am able to save a lot of money starting things off in terms of packing paper i use the free i uh, guess kind of the commercial newspaper that you really get in the mail we get a whole bunch of it delivered to the studio so i simply save it up i have a lot of it sitting in uh just uh, just kind of around the office and I always end up using quite a bit of it uh, this stuff is once again free you don't need to buy packing paper uh, from time to time I will use bubble wrap for more expensive consoles however in this situation we should be fine so what I do is I'll go ahead uh, take a bunch of this packing paper and basically uh, cover the whole bottom of the box with maybe a couple pieces and it should look a little bit like this and after basically the bottom is laid out i'll go ahead and place the console inside now normally i don't do bundles of this size uh, i normally will do one controller the, the power bar won't be as as big as the xbox 360 so in this case we don't have too much room to really stuff it with newspaper but with that said um, the whole goal is to make sure that nothing inside moves ever want it to be as tight as possible because if there's movement it's gonna hit the side of something and then break but if it doesn't move we're pretty good so we have the bottom of the box laid out with uh some nice crumpled up uh, newspaper so that the newspaper will absorb the shock on the sides i do the same thing now in this case we have the controllers and the power bar on the sides which uh, i'm not too big of a fan of putting the controllers on the side but i have no other option in this case uh, i have yet to receive complaints about uh, consoles being broken or controllers uh, not working when they arrive so this method does work it's super quote unquote eco friendly saves you a lot of money which really matters the games in this case will go on top and what i'll do is essentially grab more newspaper and layer the top of it and then simply go ahead close it off tape it up and it'll look a little bit like this when it's done and when it's all done it'll look a little bit like this it's not exactly like this i use my ebay uh, sponsored tape and i'll put a layer around it uh around the box around the middle of the box i'll essentially do the whole box um that way we still have the ebay branding without the ebay box uh and i think you save a little bit more money doing that if not a whole lot more money because those ebay boxes are like two bucks a piece and i have the store subscription so i use my ebay shipping coupon on these guys uh and i initially i didn't even know this was a thing until i actually found these rolls you know just kind of at the back of my office and i thought this was kind of a cool idea uh so yeah it's what it looks like once again uh it's definitely uh it's definitely not the prettiest uh packing job in the world but it works I haven't had any problems with it. Hopefully I don't have any problems with it in the future. Um, and obviously I, I will like to add a lot more packing paper in there, but there's not enough space. So that is how I do consoles. It's the same principle for, for any sort of other items that I do. Packing paper on the bottom, packing paper on the sides, item goes in, packing paper on top. Basically close the box, tape it off with one layer of eBay tape. Then we go ahead and we purchase the label. Now for shipping options for consoles, I only ship to the US and within Canada, everything is tracked. There's no non-track shipping options with consoles. That's my personal store policy. That's how I do things, avoid scammers, stuff like that. And the shipping options that I use within Canada is expedited shipping because that way we can get our uh, our insurance that covers the items inside of the box in case the item gets lost, stuff like that. I've yet to have to use that option, but it's always nice to have. For US, I'll either use US tracked shipping if it's a smaller item or US expedited shipping, uh, which is uh, for some of these bigger items such as this console if it was going to the US. And it's fairly straightforward. That is basically about it. Um, essentially, I try to keep my process as efficient as possible. Obviously, for this video, I had to go ahead and kind of slow things down a little bit. And voila, everything has officially been packed. We've got a lot of boxes, eight boxes, uh, two bubble millers going out for international orders. Everything here is letter mail. Everything here is letter mail. Now we did end up using a 10 by eight by six box for the uh, custom uh, bundle of about eight games or whatever, it was like nine games, because as it turns out, 
I do not have as many stamps as I thought I did. So uh, I ended up just purchasing a label and I think it was about the exact same price as it would have been to use those uh, bigger bubble mailers. But those bigger bubble mailers work great for orders uh, that have like two games, four games, six games, anything really above six games. I would compare the prices between purchasing a label and then simply using stamps. Uh, but with that said, there's a lot of really, really good sales here, uh, especially for midweek when it's usually a, a little bit slower. But I guess this time it ended up being the opposite of that where we had quite a bit of stuff here. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and drop it off at the post office. And that is really it. And yeah, it's as easy as that. Hopefully this video was super helpful. If you guys have any sort of questions or if you guys do something differently that I do, or if you know how to get some cheaper shipping materials, let me know down below in the comments. Uh, and with that said, if you want to learn how to resolve video games or you want to learn how to find inventory better, make sure to go and check out this video and this video. That would be it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.